Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, The Lens of Truth with me, Ivan Florentino. And for today's video, I'm finally reviewing Mario Kart 8 Deluxe after nine years. You heard of that right, it's been almost a decade since this game released. But before we get started, if you're new to my channel, please hit that like button, ring the bell, and leave a comment. So, let's get to it. So like I said, it's been almost 10 years since this game originally released back on the Wii U. It's crazy to believe that it's a little over 9 years since the game originally came out back on the Wii U and although it's one of Nintendo's lowest selling systems with the small install base, this game is still actually one of the best selling games on that system. And it's easy to see why with it's easy to pick up and play for anyone. Now, during this era of Nintendo, the base game got expanded shortly thereafter with updates and both paid and free downloadable content DLC was released after launch with additional difficulty settings like 200cc and additional tracks. And it was finally re-released on the Nintendo Switch in 2017 as Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and that's the one we know of now as one of the best-selling Nintendo Switch games of all time. And this version includes all the original DLC, as well as a revamped battle mode and other gameplay changes and improvements. Now, one of the things that was not expected was even more courses. During a February 2022 Nintendo Direct, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe would be receiving a season pass called the Booster Course Pass, and it would release in six waves. Here we are with the Wave 6 finally releasing, and it is completely done. And now what will Nintendo do for the next Mario Kart installment? And so with this booster course pass, with the success of the game selling so much, an additional 48 tracks were released for a total of 96, which is ridiculous. This is the most tracks that a Mario Kart game has ever had. It's also some of the best online gameplay as well. And it's a great business move from Nintendo that a lot of Mario Kart Tour tracks were repurposed and added that upscale to the game when they were added into the waves. Now some of the criticisms was that some of the Mario Kart Tour tracks were very low poly and not as great as the base game, but overall the amount of quality and quantity and variety makes this one of the best Mario Kart games in terms of selection of courses. They added a lot more characters, a lot of character colors and alterations, with an additional Mii costumes as well from Mario Kart Tour. So this game started off as a Wii U game and it already looked amazing. It ran at 720p, but when it was transferred to the Nintendo Switch, it ran at 1080p at 60 frames per second. And it looks really, really good. Nintendo knows how to do their hardware really well and this game is very next gen with high resolution textures and it runs perfectly. Now one of the biggest changes was adding the orchestrated jazz music. Every single track has something memorable and it just added to the game. And some of the gimmicks brought back from Mario Kart 7 was the underwater sections and the gliding section. And this time around was the anti-gravity sections of the game. Although they could have pushed it a little bit more, when all the gimmicks work together, it looks amazing. And the amount of variety and creativity is top notch. So I've added hundreds of hours into this game, all the way from the Wii U era and now on the Switch. And I am glad it's finally over because we're excited to see what Nintendo does next for the future installment of this series. And speaking of the last wave, number 6, this is probably one of the best waves out of the entire series. But I do want to give a shout out to all of the cool characters that made a return and all of the brand new characters that people wanted. We have a return of Diddy Kong, Funky Kong, Birdo, Petey Piranha, Wiggler, brand new Peachette, Pauline, and an N64 scrap character from the beta version back in the day, Kamek as well. Some of the huge standouts and fan favorites is Rainbow Road from the Wii with its gorgeous looking colors in outer space, one of the hardest Rainbow Roads that had a huge glow up in this return. And the surprise tour track of Tour Madrid, which was a fun surprise with the soccer field section. And one of my favorites from Mario Kart Double Dash on the GameCube is DK Mountain. And a huge surprise from Piranha Plant Cove, 
and a huge redesign of SNES Bowser Castle 3. However, for the last one, one of my favorite ones of the entire six waves is Ninja Hideaway. I mean, come on, just listen to the soundtrack. It's hype. It's one of the few Wave 6 tracks that feels like it was part of the base game with its beautiful colors and just the great theming and creativity when it comes to the multi-layered track design. Hopefully this is one that will return in the next installment. So let me know down in the comment section below what you guys think of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and have you been playing it since for almost 9 years? And are you excited for what's next to come? Thank you guys so much for watching and see you later. Bye.